Okay, we left off on Tesvav, Tesvav and Aleph. Where the Gemara had said that we had cited a machlokas Reb Lozer, mm-hmm. Reb Lezer and the Chachomim, whether we equate Mochor Atzmo to Mochor Bezdin. That the laws which pertain to a slave, Jewish slave that's sold by the Bezdin, that the Jewish slave who heir, the man sells himself into slavery. Tanakhama says, all of the laws that are discussed in the Torah pertain to Mochur, Mochur Bezdin. And Mochur Atzmo, one doesn't give him the, the maid servant, he doesn't receive the financial package, man, many things. He does not re- receive the oil in the air, it's only Mochur Bezdin. Rabbi Lezzi says, no, they're the same. So initially, the Gemara wanted to say, what's the Mochlokis? Whether you hold of the Xerah Shavu of Sochi, Sochi. Mor says, no. This is a very important point. So over here, so Rav Zafiumi says, name of Avai, no, that even the Tanakama accepts the Xerishovo, Socha Sochir, and that's how we know that. Uh, a Jew who sold into slavery is Kimi Kesef. But the reason why we differentiate because we have exclusions that the laws which are stated to only apply to Mochur Beznat, Mochur Atzmo. So the Gemara now has been going through all the exclusions. So what does the other man, the Yomer, do? What does he do? With it? it seems to be it's excluding them, differ- making a differentiation. So we left off Friday where it said, Hanik Tanik Lo. That after he, he, he completes the six years, the master has to give him a financial gift to, so the slave should be able to get on with his life. Samar so asks, what's low? Low, hanik tanik low. And what is the Torah speaking about? Machru bezdin. To who do you give the financial gift? You give it to the machru bezdin, the slave who's sold by the court. Samar so says, so what does the other opinion do with that? What does Reb Leza do with this? It is an exclusion. So now the Gemara says, finally says, that his heirs will inherit the Hanukkah, the financial gift. But if he has a creditor, the creditor does not take it. In what case? What's the context? She would do Reb Noson. We had spoken about, you have Ruvain, Shimon, Levi. Ruvain or Shimon, and Shimon owns Levi. Okay? So the question is, could the creditor of one collect from somebody, somebody else's debtor? Meaning Shimon is the, is the debtor of Levi, and Levi is the debtor of Ruve. Okay? So now could, could Levi go to Ruve and collect the debt from Ruve, or, vice, or from Levi, from, for Ruve, the, what's owed by the middle person. So Shibut or Rebnos, based on the Pesach, says you can't. You can't collect. La Allah, we rule like, like Rebnos. So the Chiddush is that although normally that one creditor could collect from someone else's creditor, can't collect from somebody else's creditor, but in regard to the Hanoka, the financial obligation that the master has to pay to so the master, is a debtor. He has to pay. So let's say this, the Jewish slave has a creditor. So he's the debtor of the slave, and the slave is the debtor of another person. So could his creditor come to the master and say, the slave owes me, and therefore you must pay me? On normal circumstances, you can. There's a mute, there's an exclusion that the Hanoko, the, the financial package, cannot be touched by the creditor of the other person. Okay? That's what the Gemara said. That's what the, the opinion who says that we equate the two, we, we use it for that the low. Therefore, it's not an exclusion to exclude the Mochr Bachru Atzmo, but it's the case of the Hanoka. Right? That, that's what the Gemara said. So this is the difficulty. We rule like, we lo, we, we rule like Reb Noson, we rule ship with the Reb Noson. Now, we have Machlok's the Tanakama and Reb Lezer. Tanakama says we don't equate 
the slave that's sold by Besden and the slave that's sold by who sells himself into slavery. We don't equate the two. That means, according to Tanakama, Mochur Atzmo does not receive the Hanukkah. Does not receive that. Okay? The. Okay. Rebeleza says we do equate the two. We do equate the two. So, the Gemara, so, and who do we rule like? This is the Rambam. We rule like the Tanakama. We don't equate the slave who sells himself to the slave that's sold by Desmond. We make the differentiation. We don't equate the two. And the Gemara says, according to the opinion that you don't equate the two, what is, he, what is his exclusion that we don't apply Shiba to Reb Noson? So the Gemara says, he rejects Reb Noson's position outside of Ebed Ivri. He disagrees with Reb Noson. The Tanakama disagrees with Reb Noson. So if you disagree with Reb Noson, I don't need an exclusion to say Reb Noson's law of halacha doesn't apply here. I always reject Reb Noson. So now we have a problem. According to the Tanakama, we rule like the Tanakama. And although we rule like the Tanakama, we also rule, the Rambam rules like Reb Noson. We rule Shibu to Reb Noson. So how do you reconcile both rulings? That's the question which is asked. Andrew, you with me? So the answer is very, very simple. The Gemara originally wanted to say, what is the Machlokas Reb Lesson to Tanakama? The Gemara asked the question, Machor Bezdin, we have a puzzle to tell me that he's nicknamed Bekesef. Nicknamed Bekesef, but Machor how do I know where each man sells himself? So Gemara says, I have Xerah Shava, Sochi, Sochi. So then we cite the Machlokas Reb Lezah and the Chachamim. So it seems to be that whether you accept Xer Shav, Socha Socha is Machlokas Tanoim. That's, that's the Machlokas. Abai says no. Everybody agrees they accept Xer Shav. So what's the basis for Kesef and Machor Atzmo? Xer Shav. Why, in regard to, do they argue in regard to all these particulars which pertain to the Machor Atzmo? Of course, we have multiple exclusions to differentiate. So we only have to deal with these exclusions, how we utilize them, only if you're of the opinion that you accept Xerashava. But if you don't accept Xerashava, we don't need exclusions. Right? We don't need the exclusion. We don't need it. To tell me one way or another. Mochor Atzmo has no re- relevance to Mochor Bezdin. The Gemara is only saying that he, we reject Shibut Reb Noson if you hold up the Xerashava. If they're equal, so what do I do with this? But that's only according to Rebbe Yumi, according to what the Gemara is saying there. But if you don't hold the Gzera Shava, we could say you accept Shibut Reb Noson, because at the low is not used for the, that particular exclusion. Okay, to be continued further. It's based on the Pasha. It's based on the Pasha. Based on some super. It's not, it's not a, a logical concept. No. If once I have the Xerxes Kosu, the Rajba explains it, it, it has a ration, rationale to it. If A owes B and B O C, so rather than B collecting from A, then C going to B, C might as well go straight to A and, and take what, what's rightfully his, because ultimately he has a right to take it from B. That, that's the rationale. Because we normally have a concept that a person's able to say, La Baldur, La Baldur, Diat. You know, you know, I had never had anything to do with you. Do you, you have only a right to make a claim to me if we had a relationship. But if there is no base of relationship, would you ever? Well, you owe my credit, my debtor is your creditor. What does one thing have to another? Let him collect, then we'll talk about it. Once he has the money, then he, then he has the money. But until he has the money, I have no relevance to you. That's the Chiddush Torah that since the debt is there and since once he collects you do have a right so rather than complicating it and spending time and waiting for him to collect you go straight to the source and you can correct, collect from his creditor from his debtor but when there's no place to lean Let's say the people have no assets, only movables. 
right? There is a lien. But, we're, we're talking, but the lien is only a lien if at the time that you borrowed, you had the possession. No. Normally, the term, well, there was, a, there was an argument the term, if play, the term replaces a lien. So the question is, when yes, when not? So if you're of the opinion that does not place a lien, then, but that, that has nothing to do with Rib Nosson. Why? No, we're talking about the loan is due. Correct? Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Said, no, 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 no. Before that, let's talk before that. Before the loan is due, matter of the, I can't even go to you and say I want to be paid. The collateral is only a means to collect what's right, what, what the man owes you. But everybody agrees that the debtor has an obligation to pay when the loan is due. When, the, when it's due, that's what we're talking about over here. But it has not every whether you hold shibud or rice, not shibud or rice, so. Even if there's no lien on the actual asset, if you have the asset, I have a right to come to you and say, you owe me, you must pay me that asset. Let's let's say there there is let's say there's no lien. Let, we we think there is no lien. Let, there is no lien. No such thing as a lien. No, no, you still no, 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 no. Of course, the man is still still owes me. Whether it's a lien on the asset or not, the debtor is still a debtor. You owe me. It's called she would have go. You personally owe me. And if you owe me, uh, even you have an asset, even though there's no lien on the asset, you must pay me. So I have a right to demand that you pay me with, your, with the asset available to you, right? Regardless whether there's a lien on the asset or, or not a lien. If the asset is available to you, you have an obligation to pay me with that asset as a debtor, correct? Yes, he does. He can. If the, man, if the asset is in his possession, the man doesn't want to pay, he could seize the asset. He could seize the asset. Although there's no lien, if he's, if he's, that's something else. But if it's in his possession, he could seize that asset. Unrelated, even though there's no lien on that asset. You owe me. If you owe me, I have a right to take it. Right? It's, it's logical. It's not because I have a lien on the asset. If you owe and that asset's yours, I have a right to take it. That's when it goes to a third party. He goes to the, he says, yes, the man, you must pay. He says, I'm not paying. So he goes to the court. First he goes to the court. Let's see, he defies the court. He's not listening to the court, so the lender has a right to seize the property. No. Let's say the man doesn't have any... Uh, any fixed property. There's no lien. You don't put a lien on, on the Talpa. So the court gives the man the right to go seize property, seize the, seize the asset to pay the debt. Why? Because he personally owes the money. I'll give you an example of this. It's interesting. We can have this in the second paragraph of the Kedushin. A person uh, has a loan document. He lends money, and he's a lender. Now he wants to sell that document. And there's, there's a market to buy the document. That's called Mechiro Shtaros. You want to sell the, 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 the Shtar, the document. So there's a question, is it, a, is it a valid transaction on the Torah level? It's only rabbinical. Good, 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 good. So that, that's exactly it. If the man who borrowed initially only obligated himself to Ruvay, and now he sells it to Shimon, 
if the man only obligates, what is the reason why the, the, the land is leaned to the debt? It's because this is what we call the Shibera Gufa. Because since you personally owe, I obligated myself. My assets are my guarantor. As the Gemara says, they are they're the guarantor for the debt. So because there's a linkage between the debtor and the asset, you sell the, that document. You're not, you, you want to sell the loan. How do you sell the loan? The loan is linked to the indebtedness of the borrower. The man never, never indebted himself to this third party. So if that's the case, you, can, you, you can't sell the lien on the property because the lien is, 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 is contingent on the personal obligation of, of the borrower. That's the position why you cannot sell a debt for that reason. It's only purely rabbinical. Now, I'm just bringing out from there, you see clearly, what's the reason why I'm able to collect the asset of the borrower, of the debtor? Because he personally owns. So it is a chiddish of lien, that if it's a fixed property, even if you should sell off the property, you have a right to go after that property, wherever it may be. Because that property is leaned to the indebtedness of the borrower. There's a question, what happens if you sell the property, you sell the document, and then the seller goes and waves the loan. Say, waves the loan. The person who bought the debt can't collect the debt now. Because the lien is contingent on the personal obligation. So if the man waves the personal obligation, so there's no lien anymore. Because the lien is only to guarantee that the debt is paid. But if the debtor, if the lender waves it, the lender waves it, so then what? So there's no lien anymore. Right? The lender sold the document. Maybe, maybe. Correct, 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 correct. Right, but that's, a, see, there the Torah says, despite the fact that he's not your debtor, but because there's this linkage, you can. Maybe yes, maybe no. But definitely when you sell a document, the lender sells a document to a third party because there's a question, versus the Kaddish with a star hope. person purchases a document, a loan document from a third party, and he gives it to the wife, to the woman, it's a Rebbe Kodesh The market value of the document, let's say it's a thousand dollar document, Market value is five hundred dollars. Says I'm marrying you with a document that has a market value of five hundred dollars. So there's one of pins in the So the Morris says, but he gave a show by So the Morris says, because she doesn't take it seriously, because what happens if the original lender waives the loan? If he should waive the loan, what she has is, is worthless. So she's not willing to give herself over in marriage to the husband for something which may turn out to be nothing. Since lacking Gemira's Das, she's not Gomer's Das to accept this as something as permanent value. It may not have permanent value. So then you have a claim against him. You have a claim against him. But he can. If he does, there's, there's, there's no loan anymore. There's no debt. There's no debt. There's no lien. No, no. You can't because factually the original borrower is indebted to the original lender. He never indebted himself to a third party because you choose to sell to someone else. That doesn't indebt him. You wanted you sold the lien, the lien you sold. No, but, again, but this is different. This is different because here your right is based on the indebtedness to the lender. What is, the, what is a lien? A lien is a right to collect what? A debt that's owed to me. Right? What happens if I waive that right? But my right is rooted in him indebting himself to me when he borrowed from me. That I can't sell. I can only sell the, the consequence of that, which is the lien. In fact, today I have an interest in his property. Why do I have an interest? Because I have a claim. The moment I waive that claim, I have no interest in it anymore. You 
You could sell the debt. You could sell the debt. But when you're selling the debt, you're selling the lien. That's what you're selling. What are you selling? At, at best, it's rabbinical. That could only be rabbinical. Well, we'll see. It's a, it's a discussion in the second paragraph of Kedushin. like a dumb shell of all of them. It's like a dumb shell of all of them. I'm, I'm indebting myself to whoever it may be. Who is that person? But who is it? But that, that's like, it's, it's like a dumb shell of all of them. No, 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 no. No, so that's the Torah does. That transfer takes place later. But it has nothing to do with the man's mindset. It has nothing to do with the man's mindset. If there's a link between three people, the third person, if the... The creditor of one is the debtor of the other. The creditor of the, of, of the middleman can go to the third person and, as if he's his creditor. No, 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 no. But here we sold the debt. Not he created a new debt. Here it's like the debt. See, there you're transferring the lien. Here it's like we're transferring the debt. It's you're indebted, not because your asset has a lien to you. You are indebted. The Xeris custom, you are indebted to the third party. A sells it to B. A is not the debtor of, of B. Now, B, B assumes the status of the lender. Now, the lender goes after the borrower. Let's say A now waives that debt. So what B is holding now is worthless. He has, she goes back as a claim against A. That's it. That's a new discussion. But, what, but, what, but A had the right... Good. He does have a claim against that. Because he actually, he, he, he was a mazik. I mean, he caused him to fall into value. But that's what I'm saying. You can't purchase an obligation. Only the Torah could transfer an obligation. The right to collect... What happens if he violates his word? What happens if he violates his word? I swear I will give you a gift. And I changed my mind. So I violated my own oath. But you have no monetary claim against me. I did the wrong thing. So you go after him. Okay. Okay. Let's go further. My time at Tanakama Don Mochet Atzbo Ein Rabbo Mosul Shippo Kananus. Why, according to Tanakama, a mocher a person sells himself into slavery, the master cannot give him a Canaanite slave, wife. Because we find there's an exclusion in regard to mocher bezdin. Because what does the Torah say? If his master should give him, right? Loisha. Lo v'lo lo mocher so that's an exclusion. Mocher doesn't receive the Canaanite wife. The Edoch. So what does the what does Rebbe Lezer do with this? Lo. In Adonav Yitain. Say, in Adonav Yitain Isha. To him, to him. Of course, the, the context which the Torah is speaking about of there is Mocher Bezdin. In the case where a person is sold into slavery. Because he had stolen, if his master should give him, 
It means that, that in that context, we were sold into slavery because he had stolen. So lo v'lo the mocher atzmo, so So what does Reb Lezer do with the exclusion? Reb Lezer says we equate the two, because the gzer shava, idoch lo bal korcho, that even if he doesn't want, it's forced upon him. He must take the woman, v'idoch. So the Mar asks. So according to the according to Reb Lezer, how does he know? He says lo comes to, to exclude. Right? We're saying low according to the Tanakama, low is the exclusion. So how do we know Machru Bezdin? How do we know according to the Tanakama that it can be forced upon him? Because he's using the low as the exclusion. Low below the Machru Bezdin. Machratzmo. So how do we know that the Machru Bezdin, that the master the man that he takes the wife, the Khi Mishnah Sochin Afgo. The Torah could have said Mishnah Schar or Mishnah Sochir. What is Schar Sochir? What is the reiteration of payment? The Tanya ki nishnas chasochir avodcho sochrein oved elobiyom, referring to the slave as an employee. He's an employee. He's an employee only works one period of time, the daytime period. Ki nishnas chasochir sochrein oved elobiyom eved ivri oved bein biyom bein belaylo. But a Jewish slave, the mask could work him day and night. Smaris, how's that possible? Chila datcho. So evidently, Ovid may be may be I mean, because he's he's his master, he could work him 24 hours a day. For the farnema, kitov lo imoch, that you must treat him within a context that it's good. He's he has a good situation with you. Imoch be machol, imoch be mishte, the same quality food you eat, you must feed your slave. The same quality drink you drink, you must give to your slave. So if that's the case, where do you have a right to abuse him? That he you work him for 24 hours. Vomer Reb Yitzchok. The contrary, most of the cannot. So therefore, since it cannot mean working 24 hours, it means the that that he's working for his master in the nighttime period, he has a right to give him the Canaanite slave woman. So that's the nighttime period. So he's actually breeding children for him. That's the nighttime period. No. He can't. It has to be told, though. If it's considered anything on an abusive level, it can, that, that's, that's a violation of the relationship between a, ma- a master and a Jewish slave. So the Mar asks, V'idoch, imi hosom, hava mina hanimin l'bidatek. If I only had that, schar sochir, I would say only if he's in agreement. I mean, if he's in agreement to take the Canaanite woman at night, then... That's Mishnah Schar Sochir. Avbal Korcho, Emelo. But to force it upon him, maybe not. Kamash Malon Lo, that you have a right even to impose it upon him. This is according to Reb Lezer. Elaman Tana Okstat. Elaman Tana Lo Yolov Schar Sochir. Originally we had said that there's an opinion that rejects the, the Gzeri Shova. According to Rav Tavyum Neim Abaye, both Reb Lezer and the Tanakamo, both accept Xerashov, and that's the basis for Kinyi Kesef, both by Mokru Bezdin and by Mokru Atzmo. Yeah. So the Mara says, Who is the Tan who, who originally we said there is such a Tan who rejects the Xerashov? Elaman Tan Lo Yolov Schar Sochir. Hai Tan Ru it's this time of this brisa. It says Bishab al Mishpachto. What happens when Yovel comes? The Kana- the Ebed Ivri returns to his family. What are we? Sp- what are the cases where he returns to his family? Either it's speaking where the Yovel came within six years. Normally, selling a Jewish slave it's a six-year period. If Yovel should come, Bishab al Mishpachto. What about if he receives the Marzea, the oil in the air? So, and then Yovel comes. What happens if she's an Omi Brio, a maidservant, also, within, before she, the six years are completed, she returns. When the Torah tells us the Shovel Mishpachto, he returns to his family. What, which slave are we speaking about? Always being a person who sold himself into slavery. 
Harei Kvar Omur. So Rashi says over here, Dechsiv v'leel minei achnas ha-yovel yavod imoch. A person who sells himself into slavery, the Torah says, he will work for you until the year of the Yovel. So that's explicit. So I don't need the post of Shavad Mishpach to return to his family as a result of Yovel. Ibn Nirzah, always speaking about a person who said, Ohapti Esadoni, and he received all. Harikvar Omur. And the Gemara is going to ask, where do we go to the Apostle? Harikvar Omur. It's also stated. We're speaking about where the court sold him for stealing. He was sold two or three years before Yovel, although the stint is normally a six year stint period of time. The Torah says, nevertheless, Bishavel Mishpachto. If this opinion, if Rabbi Lezbe Yaakov is of the opinion that he accepts the Zereshava, that we equate Machru Bezdin to Machur Atzmo, so we said Machur Atzmo is what? Is, we have a Pasuk. Right? The Pasuk says explicitly that he's only sold, he only remains a slave till Yovel. So what do I need a Pasuk to tell me? I'm able to through the Gzair Shava from Machur Atzmo. Right? What does there have to say, right, I'm able to learn it from the Gzair Shava. So evidently, we see from here that Rev. Lesben Yaakov rejects the Gzair Shava. It's not part of his Masora. Therefore, we need Apostle to tell us not only is the Machur Atzmo does he return at Yovel? But even the Machru Bezdin, he returns at Yovel. Why? The Yitzchak. Why do I need this? Excuse me. Omer Rav Nachman Yitzchak, Lolam Yolav Sochi Sochi. Factually, Reb Lesben Yaakov, he accepts the Gzera Shava. On the Novus, I equate Machru Bezdin to Machur Atzmo. So what do I need, Apostle? The Torah equates the two? The Yitzchak. Now, the Gemara says, Chidush here. When a man sells himself into slavery, he's not doing an Yisr. Right? He, he didn't do an Yisr. The man falls on hard times. He sells himself into slavery for financial reasons. But a, a person, why is he being sold by the court? Because he stole. So he actually transgressed. So I would say he should be penalized. Even though Yovel comes, he has to put in his full years, full six years. Yovel should not interrupt his, the sale of six years. Kamash Malon, the spike that he did in Yisr, the Torah says we don't penalize him. So we have this discussion. I mean, what is Akzer Shava? Akzer Shava always is, is as if the Torah writes it, writes it explicitly. We're equating A to B. So... And over here, the Rishon said it's, it's an exertion which is mufne. On both sides, socher, the, both words are superfluous. So the words were written specifically to equate A to B and B to A. So if that's the case, although you have a reason, a logical reason to differentiate, but it's as if Torah says explicitly, where A is like B and B is like A. So what is even the consideration? Because he did an Isser, that's the reason why he should not return. Return when Yovel comes. Therefore, I need a puzzle. If it's a Zereshova, it's a bona fide Zereshova. It's irrelevant what, what the rationale would be to differentiate. We don't differentiate. That's the question which is asked. So Chazonish says, a Chidush, that you see from this Gemara here, that when do we say that if you have a reason to make a differentiation, we don't, you have a Zereshova, that's only if we're to differentiation. But if the difference is fundamental in both situations and basic to differentiate, even though it's a Zereshava, the Svara would be the equivalent of the Torah writing explicitly except for this particular situation. Since they're not comparable the, under any circumstance, Machru Bezdin is for, because he stole. Machru is of course, financial reasons. Normally you'd say we equate them, but if there's a fundamental reason to differentiate, because one is, he really should put a six years in 
So if he sells himself, he didn't do an iser, we don't penalize him. But where he stole, and that's the only reason, that's the basis for his predicament, we should, that overrides the Xerashava. That's the Chazonish.